Floor, you muted yourself. You muted me. <laughs> My husband muted me. <laughs> um, okay. Welcome to um, using command to cap in one quarter and not to be mistaken with capping in the first quarter. This is using command to cap in 90 days. So I might I may change the name because I've gotten a, a couple of people tell me that. But um, my name is Flor de Maria McNally. I'm an agent in Cincinnati, Ohio and in northern Kentucky. Um, I am also licensed in Maryland, but I don't like to market that. I just use that for friends and family because I, I was born and raised in Maryland. Um, I have a small team here in Cincinnati. It's me, my husband, and a showing agent. Um, my husband is a licensed real estate agent, uh, but he is my director of operations primarily. So sometimes when I need him to show a property, he can run out there. But for the most part, our showing agent opens the doors and, um, and then I'm the lead agent. Um, I've been using command for um, two years now. I use it every single day. Um, at a very high level and uh, you know the purpose of this class just just tell me are you able to turn off the ping you can hear that on oh let me mm -hmm. just talk to me it's okay okay um aha got it sorry about that Um, so I've been using command at a high level for the past two years. Um, I consider myself to be a command ambassador. I just want people to fall in love with our platform because I think it's very, very good. Um, obviously there's going to be some glitches with it. That's just the nature of the beast when you're dealing with a beta platform. Um, the more people are using it, the better that it gets. And I'm a testament to that because the reason why I didn't even want to touch it in the beginning. Um, I, I always tell the story, I would add a contact and it would immediately get deleted and it just freaked me out. And I'm very resistant to change and I'm a systems oriented person. I'm highly organized. And when I see that happening, it freaks me out. And I know that I, I've heard some feedback from people um, that feel the same way. And I just want you to rest assured. I mean, when I went to mega camp last year um, and I heard Gary's vision, um, it really helped me to just trust the system. And, um, you know, the Keller Cloud has all of our information and they would never let anything happen to, to our data. So um, just, you know, just jump in, upload your contacts and, and start using it. Um, the purpose of this class is to kind of bring you an agent's perspective um, and also a rainmaker's perspective on how to use command every day to give you some systems so that you can use it right away and then you can tweak it and make it your own um, as as you get deeper and deeper into using command every day um, i'm by no means an expert i there's a couple of things that i haven't really played around with at a high level and that's um, websites and then the direct email and, and direct mail um, so any questions about that, unfortunately, like I just don't feel comfortable answering that. Um, I use smart plans. I use the Facebook campaigns. Um, I use contacts at a high level opportunities. I do all of my compliance through command. Um, so hopefully seeing somebody that uses it and I'm going to, I'm going to literally run through scenarios, um, with fake clients so that you can see exactly what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, from the morning to when I get a referral to when I get a lead through a Facebook ad, how to create a Facebook ad, um, how to create your own smart plan and how to put people in there, how to get 12 touches to your database today. Um, it just really hands-on thing. I, I'm the type of presenter and teacher and speaker that likes you to walk away with something done. Um, so hopefully I can achieve that with all of you today. I think we're up to 200 people here today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, uh, another thing is, you know, when I started this class, it was probably like 50 people. Now I'm up to, I, we got like a thousand registrations for this one. Um, 
So I will put a little plug in there that I do work in Cincinnati, Ohio and Northern Kentucky. So if you ever hear of somebody that's moving here, you'll get to see my systems. I'm an open book. Um, and, and you'll see that I, I really do take care of my people. I don't let any leads fall through. Um, so, and, and you know, it's a testament. 60% of my business last year came from agent to agent referrals. And I do speak Spanish too. So um, today we're gonna be um, talking a lot about my systems and command. So I kind of want to hear what are your, what is your level of command use and what are you hoping to gain from this class? Just to get an idea of what my audience is or who my audience is. Or hi, it's Nicole from New Jersey. Um, I loved the first class. Like I said, I've been rewatching it a few times to really pull out all of your information. Um, I feel like I'm at a moderate to advanced level with command. I'm pretty wow. tech savvy. Um, for me, I, I'm really interested in figuring out like the real time application. I loved when you were talking about doing the tags in the last class, but then I loved how you talked about the application and how you use it and how you sort to make phone calls. That was so helpful and impactful. Good, good. Yes, okay. That's exactly my goal, so good. Becoming in fast and furious, hearing a lot of people saying uh, just better, better understanding of smart plans, um, a lot of novices, a lot of the range of uh, use is all over the place. Um, the people just starting, people are reluctant. People think they're pretty advanced and just looking for pointers and a lot of best practices. Okay, good. Excellent. Okay, great. Um, so I used to have a portion in my presentation where I talked about goal setting. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take that portion out and actually let me refresh my presentation because it doesn't look like this is the right one. Um, so these are our goals for today. We're going to talk about numbers. Who are we calling day to day? We're going to be tracking a lead or a referral all the way through opportunity. Uh, we're going to talk about my tagging system. Again, you know, it's not like this is the only way to do it. This is just my way to do it. And you can customize it because even I customize my own system as I figure things out and and I get new scenarios. Um, I, you know, I, I'm constantly updating my tagging system. Um, database management by filtering. So that's what Nicole was mentioning. Um, how to use um, smart views and how to use your filters and your tags once you have them all in there. Um, smart plans, talking about lead generation and taking notes, um, logging interactions, um, how to run a Facebook ad that's effective, where to find um, good examples of Facebook ads to run, what I've found to be really effective. Um, and even, you know, if you guys have run Facebook ads that you find are really good, then, you know, we'll be talking about that as well. Um, tracking and sending agent referrals and how to look for patterns in your city um, to know, you know, all of this is about where do I put my focus in my business? What has worked? What hasn't worked? Who do I need to be calling as far as sponsorships? Um, who are the past clients that I need to be loving on because they sent me 52 referrals last year? Um, things like that. And um, then pipeline management, which is opportunities, and then just using a lot of the bells and whistles like bulk texting and um, the consumer app. Um, so this is something that I got from a MAPS Mastery Coach, um, just mm -hmm. conversion numbers. And I know we get a lot of these. Um, from all different sources, but this is just one, just to give you an approximate idea. Um, the one thing that you're gonna need is your units goal for the year. Um, so if it's 25 or if it's 30, how many units do you wanna close this year? I'll give you a couple seconds there to, to grab that number. Someone's asking if you can share your screen. I think I'm seeing the folks that where you are right now. Yeah. Um, does everybody see the Let's Talk Numbers screen? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you can, yeah. 
Um, okay, so 12 calls is equal to one lead. Again, this is just a conversion that I got from our team leader in, in Cincinnati, Tara Smith. Um, she gave a presentation and um, I found it really powerful. So 12 calls and that's um, two-way conversations is equal to one lead. 10 leads is equal to one closing. And so using those numbers, let's take that unit goal that you just got, that you just wrote down, whatever your goal is for the year. Um, in this example, it's 25. If you want to close 25 deals next year <clears throat> or this year, we're going to multiply that by 10 to give us 250 leads. Okay, so you're going to take your closed units goal and multiply by 10. So you'll need 250 leads for this example. And then we're gonna take the number of leads and we're gonna multiply by 12 to get the number of calls that we need to be making in, in this year to get to those 250 leads. So units goal times 10 is the number of leads that you need. And then 250 leads times 12 is the number of calls that you need to be making this year. We're going to take the number of calls and we're going to divide by 52 weeks or, you know, however many weeks are left in the year. So I would just, um, I don't know how many weeks are left this year. <coughs> it was something like 30, 30 weeks. And that's how many calls you need to be um, making and having conversations. That's how many two-way conversations you need to be having per week. And then you divide by the number of days that you want to be working. So in this case, it would be five. This person wants to work Monday through Friday. So this person needs to make 12 calls per day to close 25 deals next year. Um, somebody's saying, people are saying that they're waiting to get in and so they need an approval. Uh, Very cool. I, I don't know. I mean, can you just poke around? I don't, I don't know. I have no idea. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so, so 12 calls per day to close 25 deals next year or whatever number that you got. So who should we be calling? That is the question. And how can we use command to figure out what calls you need to be making every single day? Um, so the number one thing that um, I struggled with personally, um, when I already had a whole system set up, you know, through HubSpot, where I would track my person from the time that I got their phone number all the way through closing. And, and I just couldn't figure out how to do that in command. So I'm gonna give you my system. And so we're gonna talk about what's the difference between leads, contacts, and opportunities. Um, so we're all out here doing the same thing. We're trying to attract as many people into our world as possible and wait for somebody to raise their hand to say, I wanna buy, sell, or invest in real estate. That's what we're all out here doing. Once you get that hand raised, that's considered a lead. And that's when we start entering them into command, okay? And, and I'm gonna go through an entire scenario to show you all of this. Um, so once you've talked to them over the phone, you've pre-qualified them, you know, whatever that means for your business, um, you know, yes, they are looking to buy, yes, they do have a down payment saved up, or if they don't, then, you know, their credit's good enough to qualify, you know, whatever your questions are. You've pre-qualified them over the phone, and they have taken the next steps, whether that's connecting with a lender or setting up an appointment with you if they're a seller to come and walk through their house. Now I can uncheck that box and not call them a lead anymore. Now they're just a regular contact and I'm gonna show you a tagging system to keep track of those people during your lead follow-up time, okay? Um, I very rare, I, it, it, I have very strict requirements for you to be an opportunity in my pipeline. I know that's unlike a lot of the other people that use command at a high level. Um, I just personally, it, it's, it clutters my pipeline. It's not very clear. It, it doesn't have the phone numbers on there so that I can follow up with them. 
Um, I just find it a lot easier to tag them a certain way, filter by that tag, and then I can just boom, 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 hit those people, log my interactions, and not have to be jumping back and forth. I'm all about efficiency because I have a lot of people calling me. Um, in Cincinnati, there's not a lot of Spanish speaking agents. And so I get a ton of calls because I'm out there in the community um, and, and I get a lot of referrals. And so I have to find ways to save time. And this is one of those things where if I have somebody that's been talking to a lender, they're not going to go into opportunity until they're pre-approved and they're actually looking at homes. So this is my lead tracking system. Number one, I get the referral or I get their contact information somehow. They called me off of a sign. I met, at an open, at, I met them at an open house. I have at least one piece of information, their phone number, their email, um, their address, if they're a FISBO. Um, I'm gonna enter that person into command as a lead, okay? I've pre-qualified them over the phone. We've talked about what that means. And I'm, I'm working on either getting an appointment or I'm waiting for that, or they've called the lender and they're working on getting their documents and getting their pre-approval. I'm gonna tag them as current. So I'm gonna uncheck lead and I'm gonna tag them as current. If they're pre-approved or I have an appointment set at the seller's house, now they're an opportunity and I'm gonna put them into my opportunity pipeline. And, and don't worry, I know this is going fast, but we're gonna run through a whole scenario. Um, this is one that I came up with, like I mentioned at the beginning, you know, my, my system is constantly changing. It's very fluid and I just want you to not feel stuck, right? If you create a system and it doesn't work, then you're one step closer to finding a system that does work. Um, so even though I have a system that works really well, there's people in my, in my pipeline that are leads that I've called 60 times. They've never answered the phone. They've never answered a text. They've never answered an email they're going to go into my pond. I know that they raised their hand at some point and said, hey, I want to buy or sell a house, but they haven't answered me. And I have a really high threshold. So this all you know, depends on your business. If you have a really big set of leads that are coming in at all times um, and you call them 20 times and that's when you just give up on them, let's not get rid of that contact because they did raise their hand and you do have their contact information. Let's put them in a different folder, right, per se, um, and tag them as pond. They're a pond. So this could be like your Friday bonus calls. So you made your, your database calls at the beginning of the day. You did your lead follow-up. And now you can just dig into the pond and see these people that, you know, you've tried to reach out to in the past and see if they convert. I'll tell you, I've kept people in my database for a really long time. We're talking two to three years and they've converted. So don't, don't ever give up on those people. Remember, the goal is to just get them to work with you because there's nobody better than you. They have an opportunity to work with you. Change your mindset and change your world. Um, so anyway, so the tag is pond. Um, and then this is a, a brand new one too. If, if they've talked to the lender and they don't qualify now, doesn't your lender usually tell you they're gonna be ready in six months? They're gonna be ready in 12 months? Do we want to keep track of that? I do. So I tag them as ready August 2021, if it's 18 months from now uh, or a year from now, whatever. Whatever they tell you, create a tag. So let's go into, um, so from this point on, I'm going to not be in the slideshow. I'm going to be um, just teaching straight from command. So we're not jumping back and forth. And I think that will be a, a better, cleaner experience. Okay, can everybody see my screen? Yeah. Yes. Perfect. My camera. All right, so we were talking about lead tracking. Um, so let's say I created a Facebook ad, or let's start with a referral, so that way I can show you um, how to create the smart plan for a Facebook ad. Um, so let's say I just got a referral. Number one thing that I do to save a lot of time is I have a Google form and say, um, I don't know what keeps, 
of people painting on the screen here. <laughs> Let me. Okay. All righty. Okay. So um, say my past client, Rachel, just sent me a referral and um, she gives me her phone number. That's usually what happens. They don't usually give you an email address or any more information. So I take that phone number, I immediately call them and I say, hey, I just got your name and number from um, Sally and I am really looking forward to working with you. I'm glad she sent me your name. KW Bot. Oh, KW pays Facebook $1.2 million mm -hmm. per quarter for Facebook ads. So when you buy an ad through through the command thing, mm -hmm. you're actually paying Keller Williams International. Okay, and the rates are way cheaper. Um, so, so Sally has sent me this referral. Her name is Rachel. I reach out to Rachel and I say, thank you so much, or sorry, I thank Sally for sending me the referral. And then I reach out to Rachel and I say, hey, I'm really looking forward to working with you. I have a couple appointments this afternoon, um, but I'm gonna send you a form via text. Could you do me a favor and fill that out? And then I, I looking, I'm looking forward to connecting with you later today, okay? So I send her this form. This is the link here. And if you want more information about Google Forms, I can probably put together a class and, and teach that later. But um, I, I copy this link and I send it to Rachel. It comes back to me in this spreadsheet. Okay, how cool is that? And it asks for all the pieces of information to get my database health score up. So it asks for their first name, last name, cell phone, personal email, current address, and I'm gonna be adding birthday into this form. And then how did you hear about us? And that way, if I get three referrals in one day, I can keep track and stay organized as to where each person came from, okay? So I got Rachel referral back. And my next step is I'm gonna put her into command. So I'm gonna take uh, Rachel referral, I'm gonna go into here, add contact. I'm just gonna go back and forth between my spreadsheet and just copy and paste all the information from my Google form. Okay, I'm gonna mark her as a lead, right? Because we haven't gone anywhere. This is still a person that has just simply raised her hand and I haven't pre-qualified them over the phone. I told her I would call her back. Okay, so mark as lead. And then I get their address. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in here. I'm just gonna pick whatever comes up, okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead and tag her. Okay, so this is, this is my tagging system. I asked myself a series of um, seven questions, okay? And my husband is gonna post the link to the Capping Using Command resources in the chat. Um, so just click in there and you'll get a graphic of the tagging system, okay? Question number one. What, who are they? Are they a buyer? Are they a seller? Are they a past client? Are they a renter? Are they a non-client or are they an allied resource? Okay, so for this particular example, we'll call her a buyer. The next question is, and you can be multiple of these, right? So um, once we get to the closing table with Rachel referral, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna update her tags and I'm gonna put in a couple other tags that are in my system, okay? So question number two, is she a met or a haven't met? And I quizzed my husband on this yesterday. If it's a referral, she knows my name and she knows that I sell real estate. So she's a met. Even though I haven't had a full blown conversation with her, she knows my name and she knows that I sell real estate, okay? So she's gonna be a met. Um, and I'll run through another scenario with a Facebook ad lead um, where it's a little bit different. Um, so, she, so then the source of relationship, she is a past client referral, but she could also be an agent referral or um, I could have met her at an open house. And if I did meet her in an open house, what's the address of the house that I met her at? 
Okay. Why is that important? Well, I want to be tracking how effective am I at open houses? How many deals did I close by doing open houses? Is that something that I want to focus and zero in on next year and really take it to the next level? Um, did, she, did I meet her at a buyer seminar? Do those create a lot of leads? This is a good way to start tracking your sources of business. Um, and then also, you know, if she's a past client referral, then I want to be loving on that person that sends me a lot of referrals. Okay. So we got her from Sally. Uh, what can her last name be? Smith. Um, so here's how to create a custom tag. So Sally Smith has never sent me a referral. So I typed in her name and I create custom tag. You're going to be prompted to choose a color guys like don't get caught up with these details. It's, it's, it's not important. If you don't have anybody tagged, why are you worried about the colors? So don't worry about the colors. Just be as time efficient as possible. Just choose a default one, click add, and you're good to go. The data being captured. That's the important part, not the colors that you're using. Once you get more advanced and you're using tags and you have, you know, 3,500 people in your database and they're all clean and organized and you want to change some colors, go ahead and do it. And I'll show you how to do that in a quick, efficient way. Once you have a bunch of tags in your, in your um, command platform. Okay. So she's a buyer. She's a met. My source of relationship is that she's a past client referral. And if she's a referral who referred her and that's Sally. Okay. Remember, you can find this tagging system through the link that my husband has posted in the chat. And I'll also be sending that link with the recording um, when I send out the recording. So the next question is, if she's a buyer, who's the lender? So once she's deep in the process and she's already under contract, I'm going to add the lender, the title company, and the inspector into a tag, right? So like Gerard Home Inspections, I'm going to have them as a tag here. Um, or, you know, my favorite lender, Jennifer Scheel, I'll put her as a tag. Um, the reason why you do that is because at the end of the year, you can sort by your vendors and then you can see, okay, I sent, you know, Gerard Home Inspection 60 pieces of business. I'm going to talk to them, set up a meeting where we can discuss how we can both help each other grow our businesses through a, a sponsorship um, setup. Um, so again, it's, it's all about tracking this and it's so easy. It's so, so easy with tags. Um, if they're a past, so once this person closes and they're a past client, then we can go ahead and put them in as bought and the year that they bought in. Okay. So for now we've answered the question, who is she? Is she a met or a haven't met? Where did I get her from? What's the source of relationship? If a referral, who referred her? And then all the rest of the questions um, that I asked after that, if, um, if the buyer, who's the lender, who's the inspection company, and if past client, what year did they buy or sell? Those are after she closes, okay? And then I'm gonna add her DTD2 tag, okay? So her last name starts with an R. So I'm gonna put in N and R as the DTD2 tag. Okay, so what is that you might ask? DTD2 is a schedule. Um, I don't remember where I got this from, but it's so good that even when my daughter scribbled all over it, I kept this piece of paper. It's all crumpled up. It's all drawn on. Um, but I keep this piece of paper because it's just so, 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 so good. And combined with command, it's just incredible. Like this is a really easy way to, um, to figure out who to call every day. So let's see here. We are in the week of April 20th, so week 10. So I know that I need to be calling my P and Ls. So if I go back to here to command and I click on filter, custom tag P and L, and I hit apply, now I have 65 people that I could be calling today. That's really cool. Again, this schedule is found in the folder, um, capping using command resources, and there's a clean one in here. So don't worry, you don't have to use the, the scribbled up one. There's, there's a clean schedule here, okay? Um, but I like to, to show that because it's a little piece of my daughter <laughs> and I do love my kids. So, <clears throat> so the DTD2 tag. So now she's fully tagged. 
And where did she go? Did I add her? Okay, well then we can go through and do that all over again. All right, so Rachel referral. Okay, she's a lead because I just got her name. She's a buyer, she's a met, she's a past client referral from Sally Smith. And she is a P, oh, sorry, um, N and R. So last name. So these are all based off of last name. Okay, we're gonna put in her additional contact information, 123 Main Street, Cincinnati. Yes, right. Just be careful when you mute everybody to unmute me. Okay. So I'm going to create, okay. One other thing too, that I, I tend to do if I have a little bit of time when I'm putting uh, my people in after a long day, um, I look them up on Facebook. Okay. So if you go to Facebook, and you look somebody up, let's just say, I'll look myself up or my husband. When you click on the link up here, that's what command is asking you for. So you can copy and paste that into command here. Okay, and what that does is it's an easy reference point. So when you're making your database calls, um, if that's the kind of business that you run, if you, um, if you mostly do database and repeat and referral, then there's a little button that's created on the contact card where you can click on it and you can get up to date with what's going on in their life. Um, so if they just had a baby or, you know, they just, um, they just did something cool in their house, uh, they, you know, renovated one of their rooms or, um, you know, updated their fire, you know, whatever it is, like you can get up to date and you have a talking subject at that point. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and create her and she's already in here. It's okay. See, it, it has glitches and it's okay. It's totally fine. So here's Rachel referral. So I've got her in here and now I'm ready to call her and have a conversation with her. So I'm gonna log into command and here's a, a really cool tip. If you have an iPhone, you can actually log into command and add to home screen. And then you'll have like a little command app and you can click on it. And a lot of these same functions exist through the mobile, through the mobile site. So you can log interactions on the go. I usually carry my laptop around. Um, but if you don't, um, if you don't have a habit of carrying uh, your mobile office around, then you can do it from your phone. Okay, so um, Rachel referral, I'm calling her. I'm gonna go here and add activity. I'm gonna log a call. Just as an FYI um, text, you, you're not logging an interaction as in like I texted this person this and that. You're actually texting them when you use this. So just be really careful. <laughs> you know, it's brand right yet. Um, that's just a site. So uh, the, the, I, the iPhone trick is, is just to add a little um, shortcut to the website. So you can do it on Android. I just don't know if you can save it to your home screen. That's the part that I don't know. Um, but you can just go to agent.kw.com on any device and you'll be able to do all the same functions through there. So I've called her, um, referred her to Jennifer Shiel. Um, sent her mortgage application app and she's applying now. Okay. So she's telling me she's going to submit her application right now. So I'm going to go into edit and I'm going to unmark her as a lead because she's going to take the next step and I'm going to tag her as current. Okay. So she is working on getting pre-approved. She has expressed interest and she's willing to put in the effort to get the pre-approval to start looking at homes. And I'm gonna hit save, okay? Jennifer calls me back. She says she's totally pre-approved. I'm gonna log that as a quick note. Pre-approved for 200K. I'm gonna save that note. And then I'm gonna go into edit one more time. 
And these are all just habits, guys. I mean, it seems like a lot, but they're just habits. It just becomes second nature. I'm gonna remove this tag. I'm gonna hit save. I'm gonna click on opportunities and I'm gonna create an opportunity, okay? She's pre-approved and she's ready to start looking at houses. Okay, Rachel referral is a buyer. Okay, the, the only things that I put into the opportunity are the name of the opportunity, which for buyers, I name it, I name the opportunity by the buyer's name. If it's a listing, then I just put the first part of the address, so the street address for the opportunity name. Then I put an estimated close date. Um, so let's say she got pre-approved today. She's probably gonna be closing by middle of June. I put in the pre-approval amount for the budget and then the commission rate. Those are the only pieces of information that I put into the opportunity. Then I'm gonna make her active and she's showing. And I'm gonna create the opportunity. Okay, so that's a legitimate, she's already pre-approved, she's already submitted her documents. You know, we're just out looking at houses. That, that to me qualifies as an opportunity. Okay, um, once she wants to submit an offer on a property, get into the habit of coming in here and clicking offer. And when you're having the conversation about what they want to offer on a property, just type it into the offer section and then you're already set up for success for compliance. Okay. So say she liked five, two, three, um, tall trees drive. Okay. We're going to create an offer. Offer date is today and we're putting a closing date of middle of June. Okay, we're gonna look for the address, we're gonna enter the parties, and what this does is it activates the commissions tab so that when they do go under contract, then you can automatically put in your you know, green sheet, but now it's called commissions, and you're already set up. So when they close, you just get paid. That, that's so nice, okay? So once you talk about what the terms of the contract are gonna be with your client, and you've entered it into offers, then you go into document documents and you start your transaction in DocuSign. And then you just add, start adding your templates however your uh, market center has it set up. So we've taken somebody that was a referral from a past client and we've taken them all the way through writing an offer on a property. Was that helpful? Hopefully. <laughs> yes, very helpful. Okay, good. <laughs> Game changer, I see. Okay, cool. <laughs> awesome. Let's run through a different scenario. Let's say we want to lead generate by using Facebook ads. If that's a source of your business, that's fantastic. I'm starting to use it now. I'm mostly database repeat and referral, um, but I have started using Facebook ads and they're a lot of fun. Um, so let's say um, I have a listing coming up in Union, Kentucky and I go into campaigns and I'm gonna set up a campaign for my new listing. Hey, Floor, um, question. Oh, sorry, go ahead. So you go back to the last screen when you were setting up the commissions and all that, what if you don't use DocuSign for your contract software? Oh, then just use .loop. We don't use .loop anymore in, in Colorado. We're using command for everything. Okay, that's DocuSign then. Okay. Yeah. So um, yeah, and I, I would talk to your market center about maybe doing a training on DocuSign. It seems overwhelming because we've just gotten really comfortable with dot loop, but I literally spent one whole day on learning it and it's really not that bad. <laughs> it's just different terminology. So, um, but yeah, if you're using command 100% of the time, then you're using DocuSign. Okay. So, um, so I have a listing coming up. So now we're going to run into, uh, we're going to do a whole nother scenario. This is totally different. This isn't a referral. This is um, a Facebook lead. Okay. So um, if you have a listing coming up, or even if it's pending, highly, highly, highly recommend that you run this uh, Facebook ad campaign, um, especially in this climate right now um, with uh, COVID-19. Um, People are wanting to walk through houses, but they don't 
have the ability or they don't, they're scared to go walk through a property. I mean, here people are showing properties and we're taking, you know, the necessary precautions, but say you don't have that option. Um, or even if you do, you can run this campaign in either scenario and really create a lot of interest. So just to show you guys, these are two um, campaigns that I ran for a couple of my listings and I created um, over a hundred leads uh, for $60. So pretty cool, 50 cent leads um, and a couple of them have converted. And I'll show you all of my steps, exactly what I do um, to get them to, to talk to me and to convert into actual buyers. Um, so the ad looks like this. I put one picture of the listing uh, and this isn't a good example because I ran that one and this one did much better. Uh, oops, here we go. So you put one picture of the kitchen or maybe a bathroom, something that's really pretty in the house or the yard. And I copy and paste the um, MLS marketing remarks, okay, for the ad copy. And then this is the game changer here. Click here to walk through virtually right now. Do you think people are going to click on that? Absolutely. Like they, what? I get to walk through a house and I'm on my phone. This is so cool. You can either put in a link to a YouTube video walkthrough, or you can put in a Matterport tour, whatever it is, just give them what you promise them. So you've promised them that you're going to allow them to walk through a house virtually, put that link in as your, um, as the, oh, I forget what the terminology is, but we can go through it actually. Um, what is it called? It's the, the follow-up destination URL. Um, a couple of people have mentioned that they've built landing pages, but again, I haven't touched landing pages and agent sites at a high level yet. So I don't feel comfortable telling you go make a landing page because I haven't done that. Um, my photographer actually builds um, landing pages for us uh, with the Matterport link. So I can put that in there so that I can capture their information through there, or I can just put the follow up destination URL and just give them what they want. Because guess what? You have their email and you have their phone number as soon as they click and they try to get into this link. Okay, so I'll talk about Facebook ads in depth um, later in the presentation. So um, uh, you're, yes, I do want to leave. Um, so you put click to walk through virtually now and then whatever little headline that you want to put in. Okay, I created 100 leads, 50 cents a lead. But guys, the fortune is in the follow up. You have to follow up with these people have a system set up. I'm about to give you mine. Rip off and duplicate it if you want. But you can't talk about them being garbage leads if you're not doing the work yourself. So make sure that you're following up with these people and you're taking the steps to make sure that, that you're converting these guys. Okay. So I just got um, Frank Facebook as a Facebook lead. And I personally know when they're a fresh lead or they're brand new um, because they don't have tags. So you see how Frank Facebook doesn't have any tags. I know he's new. So I know he's the one that's going to have to go through my system right, right now. Before we get into what steps you take, I create my Facebook campaign. Second step, I create a Facebook smart plan. Okay. This smart plan is also found in the link that my husband will repost in the chat. Um, this is something that I got off of uh, Commander Conversion on Facebook. Let me see if I have that up here. Um, do... Someone wants to know if you're running uh, multiple ads, how do you know which campaign you're putting together? Uh, it'll tell you. And I can show you guys that. Do you get a notification or does it just, you have to know where to look for it? Um, so you do get notified through Kelly. I will say lately, I haven't been getting Kelly notifications and I don't know if that's something that they're working on, but I'm in command every single day. And like I said, I can see it's, it's glaringly clear when somebody is a brand new, um, brand new lead because they don't have any tags. Um, so that's one way that you can figure it out. But if you don't have any tags on any of your database, um, then I would say, uh, what's a good way? Um, you can filter through 
lead sources, but that's also hard because um, that, that's glitchy right now. Um, yeah, this is the only way that I can think of. I would, um, I would maybe go through and add all of your DTD2 tags so you can see when somebody doesn't have any tags if that's a Facebook lead. But usually Couldn't they it be come date up- added? What? Couldn't you use date added? That's, you that's can a you can do it. Sure. Yeah, you can yeah. do a, a column for a uh, date. Okay, so that, that's, a good, that's a good idea. So you can click on customize your columns. Is, this is what he's talking about and you can click on created, okay? And you can drag this all the way up to the top and click apply. And then you can save this as a new smart view by going Flora? to this. Sorry? Flora, other thing that you can do is you can check on Facebook itself per campaign, you can check the leads there. Okay, I don't know anything about that. So I, thank you. I, I've heard that that's the case, but I don't, I'd rather just keep everything in command personally because that way I can, you know, know which people are on smart plans and tag them. Yes, it's just a way to see who came from what campaign. True. Okay. Yeah. So if you want to like cross-reference, okay, that's a good idea. Um, so, so once you've customized your columns and you've um, sorted by created, you can um, put the most recent up at the top by clicking on created. Okay, and then you can create a new smart view here and you can call this um, most recent, most recently added or something like that and save smart view. And that way you don't have to keep moving these columns around. Now it's a smart view. Now you can just click on here when you log in in the morning and you can see who all of your new people are. That's a, a great idea. Um, Gary, I think it was, yep. they gave us that idea. Okay. Yep. Perfect. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. Um, so command your conversion is a group on Facebook. Um, that's really great. Um, these are people that are um, using command at a high level. They don't really answer any questions about um, bugs or glitches or error messages. This is just about strategizing and implementation. And you can search through here and see different smart plans that people have created. And you can also go into the file section and you can find some smart plans there. So the one that I use is Nick Baldwin's Facebook smart plan. Okay. And I'm going to guide you through how to go from this PDF into creating a Facebook smart plan that's specific for the neighborhood that your listing is in. Okay. Because, oh, well, you'll see the steps. Okay. So you start with the Facebook lead smart plan uh, PDF. And again, the link is in the chat. So uh, make sure you bookmark that um, the resources tab. Um, we're going to go into smart plans. And remember, this is step two. So I've created a Facebook ad campaign. And now I'm creating a smart plan specific for that ad campaign. I'm going to go up here to create. And I'm going to name this Facebook ad smart plan and then whatever neighborhood it is. So for this one, it would be Union, Kentucky, right? Because I have a listing coming up. I'm going to be creating a smart uh, uh, Facebook ad campaign here next week. So I'll already have this set up. Okay. When you're in the smart plan creation screen, you're given your options here. What, what is the next step? Remember that a smart plan is not for one specific group of people. This is just a template that you can just attach people to and they'll get the communications that are set up in the smart plan, okay? So step number one in Nick Baldwin's Facebook Leave Smart Plan is right here. So I'm literally gonna copy and paste. It's as easy as that. And so he has a text and you do have to have Twilio set up for this. And I'm going to paste it in here. And I don't know why it's being weird. So I'm gonna download this. Flora, just out of curiosity, um, was it difficult for you to like set up and understand your Twilio account? No, it was super easy. Um, well, well, then I must be slow. No, you're fine. Um, no, it, it's, 
there's a really good video that I can tag you on. Okay. That shows you how to change your number to a local number. So that's the only thing that I've found that was a little weird, but setting it up. I mean, it's literally just putting your name, your phone number, your email address and your credit card information. And that's it. Yeah, I'll do that. But, uh, I don't know. When you set up your Twilio, uh, is there a way to have some kind of a disclaimer or something to let people know that this is a number you use to communicate, but that you need to have the people call you back at a different number? That's a really great question. So that's, um, I hated the fact, and I had a negative mindset around having two different phone numbers. Um, so what I did was I sent out a, a blast text message and I'll show you guys how to bulk text your database. I sent out about 14 to 1500 text messages just saying, hey, by the way, this is Floor McNally with Keller Williams and Dame Maria Holmes. I just wanted you to have this number. Can you save it in your phone as my office texting line? I can't receive calls on here, but you can always text me if you need anything real estate related. And people are like, okay, great. <laughs> and they save my number. And some of my clients text me on both. And um, so that, that, that's the only thing that I can recommend for that. Um, great, thanks. Uh, they want to know um, if these uh, communications come from you or do they come from like a no reply type email when you send them out? Um, the emails now from the smart plans come from an email that can be replied to. And then what do you do once people respond? Once people respond, then I treat them just like a regular buyer lead. Um, I come from contribution. I honestly want to help them. So what are your needs? I do a needs analysis. What can we do to get you into a home? Or what can we do to get your home on the market? I mean, it's just a regular client. So I just run through those. I those haven't, steps. Floor, I haven't started using the emailing in command yet. It, are the emails that go out, are they compliant uh, and have a thing at the bottom for people to unsubscribe, et cetera? Yes, they do. Okay. Nice. Yep. Okay. So I've, um, you have to download the um, PDF for this, just by the way. Um, otherwise, it, it pays really funny. So um, download the, the smart plan from the capping using command resources folder and um, and then you can copy and paste pretty easily. So this says, step number one, hey, Sally, thanks for taking a look at the homes I put on Facebook. This is Floor with Keller Williams. Um, and then I can put in here my team name and Day Maria Homes. And I realize you might not be ready to make a move yet. So see, it's really passive. It's really easy. It's really, you know, it's nice. Are there any questions that you may have or neighborhoods that you'd like more information on that I could email you? Is this your email address or is text better? Okay, so that's step number one in his, in his um, smart plan. Then it says step number two, set delay for one day. So we're gonna go over here to our options and we're gonna literally just copy exactly what it says on the, on the PDF. So, so set delay for one day, okay? Now let's see what the next step is. It says send an email with the subject, thank you, and then the, the email body. So I'm going to copy. And then go to here, um, send email. And this is just going to be a simple email. For HTML emails, there's only a few options right now. But I'm sure KWRI is going to roll out with a lot of a lot more options for email templates. Um, again, I don't know anything about how to set up your own custom email campaigns. But for the next class in May, I'll have a do, you know dug deep and and learn that to to be able to present it to you guys. But for now, these are the templates that are available. Um, so really, you could just use um, the simple email. So it said to put the subject as thank you. And then you paste in the verbiage that's in the smart plan. And you can change this up. But for me, like I didn't know how to create an effective smart plan. This is something that he used and that worked for him. I, I have always run my business in this way because that's how KW taught me. It's, you know, if you don't know the answer, don't reinvent the wheel. Just copy and paste somebody else, you know, that's super successful and call it a day. Like why waste time trying to design something that's un unique why not just use something that actually just works? Yep. Um, so I copied it, I pasted it in here, and then I can put my signature. 
okay? And it's the same exact message. It says, hey, I texted you about the homes that I put on Facebook. Is this the, the right phone number? So it just in, inverses it. Um, thank you for looking at those homes, by the way. Are there any questions that you might have? All right, great. Set delay for one day. So I'm gonna come back in here. I'm gonna click set delay for one day. And then it's gonna send out a text that says, hey again, I wanted to send you some information on a neighborhood that you might like called blank. I thought you might like to see what's going on there, uh, what's going on there market wise. So now this is where I'm gonna show you something really cool. So I'm gonna create a text message. I'm gonna paste this in. And so it says, I wanted to send you some information on a neighborhood in Union, right? Because I'm creating a Facebook ad for Union, Kentucky. You had a question? Um, I wanted to send you some information on a neighborhood in Union you may like called blank. Okay, so here's, here's something really cool. So I'm going to go to my agent site. Okay, and this is one of the only ways that I use my agent site right now, so don't judge me. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to learn it. <laughs> um, and I'm going to type in Union, Kentucky, and I'm going to search. When you get this search up, start zooming in to the map and you'll start to see these blue lines okay these are neighborhoods within union okay so i'm going to click on golden pond oh. okay here's golden pond and i'm going to click explore neighborhood and here is a neighborhood snapshot of golden pond so i'm going to go back to edit smart plan I'm gonna type in Golden Pond in the neighborhood name. Oh my gosh. I thought you might like to see what's going on there market-wise, neighborhood snapshot link, okay? This, this part is so cool to me because not only are you capturing them on the Facebook ad, but now you have them in your agent site playing around. Like, I think that's the coolest thing ever. Um, so I have, my neighborhood pulled up here. Here's the link to the neighborhood snapshot and it's branded to me. Like that's so awesome. I'm keeping them in my little world where they can't escape and I'm gonna follow up with them until they tell me to leave them alone and it's gonna be great. So I'm gonna cut this out and I'm gonna go into bit.ly.com and when you get to the site, you'll scroll down a little bit and you'll see this box here where you can shorten your link. So I'm gonna paste it in here, shorten, and then copy it. And then go back to my smart plan and I'm gonna paste that in. So now they'll get a text message with neighborhood specific data within Union, Kentucky, which is the ad that they clicked on. I think that's really sexy personally, but that's just me. Um, okay, so then we're gonna set a delay for two days. I'm just going through the steps, just going through the steps. Okay, two days. And then it says, hey, I hope I'm not being a pest. I wanna make sure that you're being taken care of. There were some pri recent price reductions in the area you were looking in and I wanna text those to you. Should I send them via text? Because again, this person hasn't responded. Right? So we're gonna copy that, paste it into a text message. Okay, and this contact first name, like their information is gonna be filled in there, which is really cool. All right, so then it says set delay for one day. These are very text heavy smart plans. And I'm gonna plug in something else here. Um, for, for my new smart plans, I um, did modify his a little bit and I'm putting in a call right here with the email. Um, and I forgot to, to mention that when I was building this, but right after I put set delay, I put make a call and that's gonna create a task reminding me to call them that day. Um, the reason I do this is because, yeah, text messages are great, but I also want to um, try every method of contacting them. And then also to see if it's even a working number. 
Um, so I put in a call right after this step. And an email goes out that same day. Couple questions here. Okay. Uh, are you updating the plan daily for each new prospect in order to personalize the emails? No, because it, it says contact first name. So this, it's going to pull it from the contact card. Um, and what if they do respond and you pause the smart thing? Yeah, I'll talk about that. Um, thank you. That's a great question. Oh, sorry. What does KW say about the TCP texting rules for smart plans? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> and, and does the email go out automatically or do they have to send manually? Or do you have to send them manually? Oh, no, they, they send automatically. The emails send automatically. Um, so I set the delay for one day and then it doesn't say text message here, but it, it's a text message. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to go up to the top. I'm going to add a text message. I'm going to paste and then I'm going to read it again. Right. I didn't hear back. So I thought I would just send those price reductions your way. These are homes in union, right? Because I'm building this for union that have been reduced in the past seven days that may be more negotiable than the newer listings. That's really cool. So how do you do that? How do you send them an updated price reduced list? You're going to go into your agent site. You're going to start from scratch again and search for Union Kentucky. Okay, we're going to go here to for sale and we're going to put active and coming soon. And then we're going to go into more and check it out, price reduced in the last seven days. And we're gonna to toggle that on. And then this link is gonna automatically update. So we're gonna grab this again, cut it out of the URL box, go back to bit.ly, shorten this link, and then copy that link and go back to the smart plan and add the link there. Okay, and these are neighborhood specific. So if you're running a Facebook ad for Dallas, Texas, like you wanna have a Dallas, Texas Facebook smart plan. Or if you're building one for Nashville, Tennessee, you wanna have a Nashville, Tennessee smart plan that's specific because otherwise, if you're sending this to people that are in some other town, then they're gonna be like, what the heck? Why do I need this stuff? Um, but if they clicked on that ad, then they're interested in that neighborhood. So, it, so then it's relevant. Did you say you shortened the link? Yes, using Bitly. Is that free or is that uh, paid for? Bitly is free. So if you just log into the site, you scroll down a little bit and then you can just plop it in here and shorten the link and copy it. Don't click log in or sign up or any of that. You can just use the free box here. The only reason you would wanna sign up is if you wanna track analytics, like how many people have opened the link, and that is a paid service. But if you're just wanting to shorten the link, just to plop it into a text message, it's totally free. Okay. Can I ask what the purpose is of making the link shorter? It just looks prettier. <laughs> so you if, you're, if you're putting in this really long URL into a text message, it's gonna look silly. You know, the only thing is not everyone has heard of that and some people are hesitant to click on links where they don't recognize anything in the link. They think they might think it's spam. Okay, well then they can just text back and say what's in the link. I've never personally had a problem with people clicking on the links, if that um, brings you any uh, comfort. Okay, thanks. I have a question. Is it like um, a, a snapshot of that moment that you are taking that link or if they click on the link three days later, will it be current to the day that they're clicking on it? It'll be current because remember what we did. We you just set, set all this up ahead of time and let it run. You don't have to get a task and do it as each thing comes up. No, no, no. It, it automatically updates because you're using your agent site and these filters. Like if you look at the URL, it says location union, right? And then if you go further, it says union USA, then it says coming soon, price reduced, um, and so it, it just automatically updates. So you don't have to do anything other than just put the link into the smart plan and then it auto updates. Okay. It's really awesome. Um, so I'm not going to go through the rest of the steps just um, to save time, but that's, you know, th those are the two important nuggets that when you go in and start creating these smart plans, th those questions are going to come up. Like, how do I create the price reduced link? 
and how to create the neighborhood snapshot link. So we've covered that, it's being recorded and I'll send it all out to you guys. Okay, so then I'm gonna click save. Okay, so step one, I've set up a Facebook ad. Step two, I've created a smart plan that's specific to the neighborhood that the Facebook ad is targeting. Okay, I'm gonna click save. And now I've run my ad and I get a lead. Okay, so what, what happens here? What do I do now? So I get my lead and where'd he go? Keeps disappearing on me. So Frank Facebook, okay, so I open him up. I'll have a little notification up here that says you just got a new lead. Um, ideally, you'll get a Kelly notification as well. Um, and like we talked about, you can create a smart view um, that sorts them by the date that they were created. Quick question back on the link. Can you convert the link into a hyperlink with your own name like you click here? Not for a text message. You can do it in an email if you want. Sure. Floor, just so you know that um, the lead notification is not currently working. Correct. Uh, yes, <laughs> I mentioned that. <laughs> yeah, lead notifications are not working for Kelly right now. Yes. So that's why we talked about different ways that you can find them. Um, okay, so we got this lead. I found him. He's not tagged, so I know that I haven't done anything with him. Step number one, I'm going to go into Smart Plans, and I'm going to add him to my new Union Smart Plan. Okay, I'm going to hit Start Now. Okay, so he's automatically going to get a text message from me right this second. So if I refresh, it should, yeah, it should populate. So he automatically got a text message. It's undelivered because it's a fake number. So <laughs> this is just a, a contact that I created for this class. Um, anyway, so he got a text message right away. Okay. Step number two, because I've added him to a smart plan and I want to um, keep my database organized and know that he's already been touched. I'm going to click edit and I'm going to add his tags. What are my questions? Who is he? I'm gonna assume he's a buyer because he's clicking on a listing. But then if I call him and I find out that he also has a house to sell, then I'm gonna add the seller tag, okay? But for now, to me, he's just a buyer. He doesn't know who I am and he doesn't know that I sell real estate. So I'm gonna put, have it met, okay? He came from Facebook and specifically, he came from a Facebook ad. And then I'm gonna add his DTD2 tag, okay? So who is he? Is he at met or haven't met? Where did I get him from? And his DTD2. And then I'm going to click save. Okay. So say he answers right back to me and he says, hey, um, text is usually better. I've gotten that before. Then I'm like, great. I come in here to smart plan and I unsubscribe him. Okay. Step number one. Step number two, I answer him. <laughs> text is better. Oh, Great, thank you for letting me know. Are there any questions that I can answer? Okay, and then I just treat him like a real person. Like he's actually answered back to an ad smart plan. So I'm just gonna treat him like a real person. Like what, what are you up to? Like, are you looking for a house? What, what can I do to help? What resources can I send your way? To help you like do you need a credit repair specialist do you need a lender do you what do you need from us um, and just come from contribution so um, so if they answer back unsubscribe them and then just answer their question or call them um, and then the rest of the steps are exactly the same right so if he calls my lender then I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna click edit I'm gonna unmark him as a lead I'm gonna take off the haven't met tag and now he's a met I'm going to hit save. Okay. Oh, sorry. And then I'm going to put in current. Okay. So he's working with the lender. The lender lets me know that he's pre-approved. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to take out current. Tag my lender in there too. Sorry. Okay. I'm going to hit save. And then I'm going to go and create an opportunity for him. So all the same steps as Rachel referral. Was that helpful? I'm sorry, how did you see that the lead texted you back? Um, you'll get a notification saying you got a text message from Frank Facebook. Gotcha, 
Thank you. Mm -hmm. You do have to log in and see that. Someone was says, uh, I was told that smart plan emails usually go to people's spam folders. Is this something you've experienced? I've gotten enough response where I don't care if it goes to spam for some of the people. And that's why we're, we're doing multiple touches. We're not just relying on the emails. We're also sending them text messages and we're also sending them. Uh, we're also calling them. Um, so just because one person doesn't get it, don't get so caught up in that. I'm not saying that you are, but um, just focus on the positives. Like you can send text messages and you can also call them. And then if they end up being a, bad lead, whatever, like go on to the next one. You only paid 30 bucks to run the, the ad. Um, so that's good. Okay. So the other, um, so any questions about tagging? Cause this was tagging and filtering and then how to get a lead all the way through opportunity. Okay. So, um, the other thing is I'm, I'm constantly running um, a competition with myself to see how high I can get my database score. Um, so this is what determines what a database a score is made up out of. Um, at least the first name, phone number, email address, home address, that'll get you all the way up to 80%. If you just have first name, phone number, and email, that's enough to get you in the green. Okay, but if you get that address, then it's, you know, you're already 80% of the way there. If you add a tag, that's an extra 4%. Um, a social media profile is an extra 4%. A birthday is 4%. Um, and then the company that they work at is another 4%. Um, the only one that I really don't use is the source because I'm sourcing my, um, my relationships through tags. So I'll show you kind of a workaround so you can get that extra 4%. Um, so moving forward. Our kids are crying, so my husband went to tend to. Okay, so um, so this guy here, um, he's at a sixty-eight percent, and let's say I wanted to get that extra four percent for lead source, um, you would go to add more information in his um, contact card, sales pipeline. And then here's lead source, okay? If it's a referral from somebody, like all these are really weird options, like, like four screen, I don't, I don't know what these are. So I just put in all lead sources and that just gets me that extra 4% because I'm constantly trying to uh, um, get my database score, score higher and higher. Um, so this is a good way for you to go through your database and call people and say, hey, I don't have your address and I would like to send you things, you know, for Christmas or for your birthday from time to time. Um, could I get your address? And they're usually happy to give it to you. I think we get really caught up in, you know, like, I don't want to bother that person. But at the end of the day, we are professionals. We're real estate agents and we need to act like other professionals. When you go to a doctor's office, they ask you for everything. I mean, they ask you for your birthday, your last menstrual cycle. I mean, like the least I can do is ask for your birthday. So when I call people, I just ask for everything. Like if I'm on a call with them, I'm like, hey, by the way, what's your birthday? Where do you work at? And I get that all in there because the more information that I have, the more that I can send them, right? So for their birthday or their purchase anniversary or um, their kid's birthday, I can put that in notes. Um, things like that. So the higher you get your score, the better. Um, any questions about that? Any questions here? Do you ask on a Google form or on the phone? Um, I ask, it depends, right? So if, for example, like if somebody calls me on a sign call, and they're like, hey, I'm calling about this property. I'm sitting in front of the house right now. I'm like, can you hold on one second? I'm actually in the middle of an appointment. I'm going to text you a link. Could you fill that out? And I'll email you the information in a virtual tour. Then they're like, sure. And they fill it out. And now I have all five pieces of information. Um, so it just depends. And then if it's like, um, it's a referral and I have time to sit down and talk to them, um, then I just get their information over the phone. So it's whatever works best for you. Um, okay, cool. 
So smart plans, uh, let's talk a little bit more about those. Um, one thing I mentioned at the very beginning of the presentation was um, we can get 12 touches done today. Um, one thing that I would notice is that um, my contacts were being subscribed to neighborhoods like this here, subscribe to neighborhood Sharonville. And I'm like, what is happening? Like, what, what are they being subscribed to? Are they getting any communication from me? What's going on? So I went onto one of those Facebook groups and I just asked, I said, hey, what happens when somebody's subscribed to a neighborhood? And they said nothing. It only affects the contact when you add them to the monthly neighborhood nurture smart plan. I'm like, what is that? Um, so when you subscribe somebody to a neighborhood, which you add the neighborhood here, you can add them to what's called the monthly neighborhood nurture, which is a monthly email that they get with statistics about their neighborhood. And it looks like this. It's totally branded to you and they can reply back to this email and they can click and explore the neighborhood eventually. <laughs> Let me click on it again. Okay, well, while that's loading, um, they open up a neighborhood um, snapshot and they can actually add their own neighborhoods. Okay, here we go, it loaded. So uh, I'm gonna preach again, don't worry about what neighborhood you should be adding to these people. It doesn't matter. The point is you're getting them a touch, right? So if you don't know what neighborhood to add for a certain person because you don't have an address and they haven't expressed interest in a certain area, then just add your market center neighborhood. And then they'll get this snapshot and they can go in here and just add a neighborhood. Okay, and they can search for whatever they want and then you'll get notified. Well, you won't get notified, but you can see it um, in, their, in their feed. So this person here, he was a Facebook lead, okay? I added him to the monthly neighborhood nurture as well as the regular plan. So he's been getting texts from me for the last week. Okay, and then I added him to the monthly neighborhood nurture smart plan. He got the email, he opened it up and he started clicking around and he looked at a listing. So I'm gonna click on that and you can see the listing. It's this listing in Sharonville for 169,000. So that, that can prompt me to give him a call. Like, hey, I saw you um, got my market snapshot. Do you have any questions? Cause I see you looking around in there. Like that's so cool. Um, and a way to filter by activity is you just want to click on this updated tab. So if you go to customize columns and you add this updated column and you put it at the top, hit apply and you can save that smart view. Okay, you can sort by updated. Then I can see, like, see, I came to the top because I visited my market snapshot. Okay, so that's a way for us to get notified right now when it's, that function isn't available. Um, so this person also visited or they got a text message from me. So all the, the people that are getting touched or are visiting things um, come up to the top in the updated, um, in the updated view. Um, so that's a quick way to add your neighborhoods. How do you find the people that don't have neighborhoods? There's an, uh, a smart view that's added by KWRI called No Neighborhoods. Okay, so if you click on Smart Views and you scroll all the way down to the bottom, it says No Neighborhoods. You click on that and you'll get all the people that don't have a neighborhood. So in this case, Rachel Referral doesn't have a neighborhood. So I'm gonna add a neighborhood for her. She said she was interested in 45202. Okay, so I'm just gonna add that one. She's subscribed to the neighborhood and then I'm gonna add her to a Smart Plan monthly neighborhood nurture. And she'll automatically get that email and it'll look like this, okay? And it repeats every month. So every month these people are getting an email with their snapshot. And if they've added neighborhoods to their snapshot, they'll get all of those neighborhoods and whichever ones they've removed will be removed, okay? So that's an easy way to get 12 touches for your entire database. Um, let me see if there are any questions. 
Um, I put myself on a neighborhood nurture and have never gotten anything not working for me. Make sure that you're subscribed to a neighborhood. If you're not subscribed to a neighborhood, then you're not going to get anything. Okay, so make sure that it says on your timeline that you subscribed to a neighborhood. Um, do you have to add their neighborhood as well as add them to the monthly neighborhood nurture? Yes, the answer is yes. If the contact is looking at the smart plan page, does that in effect update the contact? Yes, yes. So if they take a look at it, then you're, the, um, the system will add that they viewed the neighborhood snapshot landing page and then they'll move up to the top in your updated list. No, you cannot bulk add neighborhoods. Um, my suggestion is I was really behind and so I had my assistant add neighborhoods, but then I, um, I got a like 40 contacts from an event that I did. And so I just had a virtual assistant do it for 575 an hour. Um, so that, that's another option. Uh, virtual tours are just created by my photographer. Um, yes, I always add myself to every new smart plan that I try. Like the Facebook ad campaigns, I'm already sure that they're gonna go great. So I don't do those, but any new one, like the promote my app one, if I were to try that one, I would add myself to it. Uh, when you go to your agent site and copy a URL, are you logged in as yourself? Does it matter? Uh, yes, I would not logged in, but I would go to my personal agent site. So cincinnatihomes.kw.com, absolutely. Because I want them playing around on my site because then I'll get those notifications here. Um, I found a virtual assistant on Facebook and I can send you guys his contact information. Um, okay, hopefully that answers all those questions. Um, there was something that I just thought about. Oh, so th this was a really cool idea. So um, somebody mentioned like, do you, um, for the Google form, going back to the Google form, um, you can create a smart plan if you wanna like update your database in mass um, and just send out a Google form for everybody to give you their birthday and their address or their email address if you don't have it. You can create a quick smart plan called update my database. This is an idea that we came up with with um, one of the agents in my market center. It's a really good idea. Um, we're gonna make it one step and we're just gonna make it a simple email. Help me update your information. Then you could put, hey, um, and then you can use these little fields, contact first name. I'm working on updating my database and I need some missing information. Would you mind filling out this form? And then you can put in the link to your Google Sheet. Okay. Thank you so much in advance. And then you can put your signature. Okay, and then you would hit save, and then you can just send it to everybody in your database. Okay, so you would just click here, select bulk action, and add to smart plan. Okay, so you can do them 50 at a time. Update my database and click select, and it'll send that email to all 50 people. So this is a workaround if you haven't really gotten into sending emails through command and MailChimp. If you just wanna send it through the command email, this is one way to do it um, through a smart plan. Okay, so I thought that was really cool. Um, let me see. Um, it'll be in the link and I can send this again. Sorry, my husband is tending to our children that are upstairs. Here's the link to the resources for the smart plan. And I will be sending that link also with the recording. Um, okay, cool. So that's it for smart plans. Um, as far as Facebook campaigns, 
Oh, uh, we talked about note taking, so, but I just want to touch, touch a little bit on that. Remember, every time that you're having a conversation with somebody, like if you're sitting down and you're doing your lead generation time, have your command up and log all of those interactions because you want to reference back. Like people will be so impressed if you remember that their you know, little boy broke their leg and they were recovering. And if you ask about that broken leg you know, next quarter, they're going to be like, wow, like she really cares about me because you do. It's just, we have so much information in our brains and people don't even realize just how many conversations that we have every day. But if you're taking notes, you'll have it right here on your timeline saying, Hey, Mateo broke his leg in April. He went to the hospital. Everything's okay. He's going to be recovered by X date. Um, just based on the conversation that you had. Um, so go in here and add activity when you're doing your lead gen. Click on the interaction type. You can put in a meeting, a call, or a quick note. This text option actually texts the person, so be careful with that. Um, so if you want to log that you texted them, use a quick note. Texted them to follow up. Um, I don't generally use this note tab because then it's, it's hidden from me. So if you use this add activity, it's gonna show up in your timeline. Um, and just again, don't be afraid to ask for people's information. They, they are more than willing to give it to you. You are a professional real estate agent and I, you know, just view yourself that way and treat yourself that way. Um, so for Facebook ads, I talked about one of the campaigns that was really effective for me. Um, one way that you can find effective, um, um, Facebook campaigns is by going to, um, to that command your conversion group. Um, let me see if I can find it. Okay, here we go. And you can use this search tool here at the bottom in the menu and just look for Facebook ad. And people put examples of things that worked well for them. Like this one here, Facebook ad results. I've been running this Facebook ad and they, they give you all the verbiage here. We've got a list of all the Lebanon area homes that have had price reductions in the last seven days. We know how to create that link, right? That auto updates. So we can create that Facebook ad just by ripping off and duplicating. And I've run that ad and it's good. It doesn't give me a hundred leads for $60, but I get like 10 of them and they're pretty good. So it just says, you know, looking for a great deal on an Oakley home, we have a list of the most recent price drops and it updates in real time. Click below to see the best deals on your future home. I got those leads for about $4 a lead. That's not bad. The best listing, the best Facebook ads to run are on an active or pending listing. So if you have a virtual tour person, person that doesn't matter port tour, or if you just take a video and upload it on, on YouTube, then you can run this kind of ad. Um, and then just quickly, because we're almost out of time, um, for agent referrals, you can send referrals through command. You just select an agent that's in your network, and if they're not in your network, then you can add them through here. You can put all the information about your um, client's goals, and then you can select a person from your database and add them, um, and then they'll get all their contact information. Okay, so sending a referral. And then you can also go into this map function. I think this is really cool. Um, I don't know about you guys, but those um, referral pages are really tough. Like there's some really good agents that stand no chance because it's, you know, like by the time you get in there, there's like 75 comments and, you know, the person goes with the first person that was mentioned. Um, so if you wanna look for somebody or um, a referral partner, in a different way, then you can use this map function under referrals and you can search for people by production. So let's say I'm looking for a referral partner in Nashville, Tennessee. I can actually ask my client or my friend, whoever it is that I'm referring, what part of Nashville are you looking in? Oh, you're looking in East Nashville. Okay. Then I can zoom in and I can find all the people based on production here. So if you like to work with big teams, then you can choose a, a a big team and you'll see all their team members here. Um, you can click on the, on the name and you can see that there's a rainmaker and then one other, one other agent and they sold 1.2 million uh, GCI or sorry, in volume. 
Um, and then you can just go through here and just pick and choose, you know, based on volume, based on production, based on number of listings, based on number of buyers. Um, it's just a different way to interview agents. Um, another really cool feature here is um, referral patterns. So let's say I'm looking for who refers the most business to Cincinnati. Instead of seeing what referrals are being sent, I can look at what referrals are being received. And I get my list of people here, my list of cities. So Louisville, Lexington, Orlando, Whittier, Colorado Springs, Cornelius, all these places tend to refer to Cincinnati. I think that's really cool. So it, all of these things are about getting focused and zeroed in on what you should be doing on a daily basis to grow your business. Um, as far as opportunities, jumping out of here and going into opportunities. Remember, I have um, very strict requirements for when a person goes into, um, into opportunities. So once a person is, um, is pre-approved and they're looking at homes, they go into the showing tab of my opportunities pipeline. Um, and then here I can go through with my showing agent in the morning at, at our team huddle and I can say, okay, where are we at with Brian and Teresa? What are they looking for? Could we find them something in a different area? And I can just go through, like these aren't people that I necessarily need to call. Um, so I can just go through it. The reason why I don't like putting people in here for cultivate is because like there's no phone number here. I have to click. And then I have to click again and then get their phone number. And where am I logging the interaction? I can't even log it here. I would have to go to contacts. So it's just better for us to tag as current, then search by this custom tag, current, hit apply. And if you guys have questions, my husband is long gone. Like he's, I don't think he's coming back. So just um, unmute yourself and ask your question. Um, and then I have 58 people that are either working on getting pre-approved or they're getting their house ready for sale. Okay, so that's why I like that easier. Or I like that better. And then I can customize the column and I can move the phone number up to the top and check it out. I have a list of phone numbers that I can call and I can add activity through my list. So I can add that I called them, left a voicemail, whatever it is. So I just find that to be a lot more time efficient than going through opportunities and having to jump out, go back to contacts, add the interaction, jump back into opportunities. It's just a huge waste of time. So once you've created an opportunity for them, do you remove that current uh, tab? Tag? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, when I go in there, my first step is to remove that tag. Second step is to create the opportunity just so that I don't forget. It's all habits. That's, you know, once you do it six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 times, it'll be second nature and you won't even think about it. Uh, Laura, Laura, I have a quick question. Uh, sure. As far as uh, Facebook leads, uh, what's your, what's your follow up? Like say you get a lead, um, you call them immediately. How often do you follow up uh, during the day? I know you also have a, um, you know, the, the, the Nick Baldwin's um, uh, smart plan, but what's your follow up as far as phone calls? You know, you could, like, like you said, money's in the follow up. Yeah. So I just put them on the smart plan. And when the smart plan ends, then I just call them on a weekly basis because I've touched them 12 times in a really short period of time. If they don't respond, then I go into a less aggressive follow up um, okay. campaign. And that and they'll probably be like a pond, right? That's when you that you put them on the pond and then yeah, whatever your threshold is, exactly. Like for me, it's a lot. Like I'm gonna try 45 times until I get in touch with you, um, gotcha. and then I put them into pond. So whatever your threshold is, there. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And then just moving your people along the phases is really important. So just logging in every single morning, seeing where your people are at, talking with your administrator and seeing, okay, this person already had their inspections, let's move them to appraisal. And that way you can start seeing like, um, you know, the closer that you get, the more that your, um, your potential and probable income are changing, okay? Um, just a couple quick features here before I go into Q&A. Um, bulk texting is really cool. So if you have an upcoming event and you just wanna invite your entire database, 
or you just want to invite your Mets, for example, let's say we just want to invite our Mets. We go into filters, we search for Mets. We hit apply and we get our 422 Mets. We're going to click and select all over here, select bulk action and send bulk SMS. Okay, so you can send 50 messages at a time. You could probably do more, but that's the, you know, that's the most that you can see on one screen. And you can say, hey, um, I'm having an event, and then just putting your uh, Eventbrite link in there. So that's a quick way to reach a lot of people in a short amount of time. Um, I showed you a couple tips and tricks on how to do agent sites. Um, for your consumer app, it does seem to be working as far as the branding. Um, and then you can go in here and filter by the people that have downloaded your app. Um, if you go into filters and you search for, uh, where is it? There was one is assigned. It's gone now. Okay. So branded to me, but I don't know if this works. Hit apply. Okay, good. So filters branded to me, select yes, hit apply, and you'll get all the people that have downloaded your app and are using it. Okay, um, these are really cool because you can see the listings that they're looking at on your app. And somebody saved a listing in a neighborhood snapshot and I was able to see the one that they saved. But I don't know about collections yet. I don't think that those are um, syncing with command. So you'll have to ask them like, which I, I know it's stupid, but it'll work eventually. So I'm just, you know, uh, for me personally, the way that I run my business, I'm still setting them up on an MLS feed. I send them my app and, um, and I put them on the monthly neighborhood nurture. So I'm doing all three things. And I just tell them like, this one's the one that auto updates. If you have a house that you wanna go see, just text me. Don't rely on like saving to collections or saving in the MLS feeds. But that way they have, your whole um, collection of ways to search for homes. Um, I send them an app and I tell them like, this isn't fully functional yet, but you should use it. It's really cool and give me your feedback, something like that. Um, and then you can click on the listings that they look at. And he's looking at a $2 million home. I don't think he can afford that, but, <laughs> but you can see everything that they look at through, through their feed. Um, all right, so it's time for questions. So I'll, I'll just open it up and um, what kind of um, questions do you have or what were your biggest ahas? So I have a question. Um, when you were talking about the pond and so forth, where would you put that at in your tag? Like if they were a current client, I'm trying to go back and look. Oh yeah, sure. And I didn't do much focus on custom, um, like how to create the custom tag. So I can go through that right now. Um, so say this person is, um, well, she's not a good example because she's a past client. So let me go to the next one. Okay. Let's say myself. Um, I'm a pond lead. I've attempted to call them 45 times. They didn't answer the phone. So I go in here and let's say you don't have that tag made up yet. I click in the box for tags and I type in pond. Okay, I put a space there so that way it um, prompted me to create a new tag. Here's the button here, create custom tag. We're gonna click on it and then we're gonna hit add and that automatically tags that person. And does it matter what order the tags are in? Can it be in any order? Yeah, they, it, it moves them around after you save them. Even though I put them in this order, it's gonna move them around for me when I click save. Okay, so it doesn't so, matter. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. The point is that those tags are in there so that you can use them to filter or to add to smart plans or to send emails to. Um, as long as they're in there, then that's what matters. Awesome, thank you so much, I really appreciate it. You're welcome. A really cool thing too that you can do to add DTD2 tags really quickly is you can click here and sort by last name, A to Z. Okay, and then if you show 50 at a time, sort by A to Z, scroll down to the bottom, make sure that there's only A's there, okay? Click select all, and you can select bulk action and add bulk tags. 
Okay, so this is a really fast way to get your DTD2 tags done. That's and nice. even with that, you're touching them, you know, four times a year, plus your monthly neighborhood nurture, you're up to 16 or, okay. or 16, yeah. Um, so this would be A and W, create custom tag. So you can create a custom tag from this screen, click add, search for that tag again, and then hit submit. And now you've tagged all 50 people with the A and W tag. So that's a quick way for you guys to get this done. One thing that I used to mention in my class when I did the slideshow and my brain's kind of getting used to this new presentation format. Um, it took me six months and I had 500 people in my database. It took me six months to get all their information in there, to get them fully tagged, to um, connect all their social media profiles. It, it, it takes time guys. And I'm not saying that I shut myself up in a room for six months and, and just tagged people all day long. I would run my business. And I, I mean, I sold 52 homes last year by myself. I didn't have an assistant. My husband was working. So this was by myself. Um, so I was really busy, but I would come home, I would open up my laptop as we put on Netflix, let the kids run around. And if my daughters would come up to me saying, hey, can you read me the story? I would close my laptop, read them the story, and then open it back up and just keep tagging. And it took a solid six months, dedicating about an hour to two hours a day. Um, but now everybody has a tag and now I can filter by all sorts of things. So. Just take the time to do it every single day. There's no trick. There's no quick and easy method um, other than the DTD2 tags that you can add really fast and start making those calls. Um, it just takes time. Um, other ahas or questions? I have a question about, um, I missed the part like where you clicked to pull up the phone numbers so that you didn't have to look in each individual file. Yeah. Okay, that's a great question. So we're going to go into customized columns. This is one of my favorite features. Um, and then we're going to see the columns that I have um, available right now. Mm -hmm. And if phone number's there, I'm going to drag it to the top. Okay. I'm going to hit apply. And now my phone numbers are in my first column. Oh, that's great. Isn't it awesome? Yeah. And then from here, if I'm making calls that day, this is my call list. I can click on these three little dots over here on the right and I can click add activity from here. So I don't even need to open up their contact card. Oh, that's fabulous. And just put call and type it in. Um, but even if you do click on the, on the person's name so that you can see their timeline and get updated on, you know, where they're at, mm -hmm. you know, you can click um, add activity, log your call, take your notes and then hit next. And then you'll go to the next person on your list. So do you recommend um, if we've been using notes um, to copy that stuff over to activity so that it's more readily available when we see, when we pull up their file and we're making phone calls. So it's in the timeline. I'm sorry. My husband was showing me this funny comment. What, what was your question? That's okay. I haven't been using the activity button. I've been okay. putting everything in notes. Okay. So it doesn't, I have to go into notes every time. So would it be beneficial to take that information and put it over into activities so it shows up in the timeline and it's just easier to process the information when I'm on the phone call? I wouldn't waste my time getting everything over to the timeline. I would just start using the timeline now. Okay. Um, so that way next quarter's calls, you'll have the, the last activity on there. Okay. So I would just keep doing what you're doing, referencing the notes, reading up on them, and then going back and then adding activity the way that, that I showed you today. Okay. Uh, so while we were on this call, look, I got a lead. It's, there's the little notification, new lead info captured. Okay. So I'm going to hit dismiss because my person's up here at the top. Remember, I'm going to add them to a smart plan first. And they're my Bond Hill people. Get them on a smart plan and then I'm going to tag them. Buyer, haven't met, Facebook, Facebook ads, and then B and D and hit save. So now I've, I've immediately touched them. A few seconds ago is when he came in wow. and I've done those steps. Now he has a text message from me and I followed up. What other questions? Uh, 
Flora, um, when you're doing, so you have two market centers that you work, like two different, three. Okay, even better. So <laughs> how, how, I'm, I'm so afraid to like mix on command my Florida and my St. Louis. So I'm, it's so silly that I'm not doing it. So what, what do you do to differentiate the two, the three areas? Is it Ooh, just where okay. you're tagging? Yeah. Um, so that's a, that's a great question. So I have, um, the bulk of my business is in Cincinnati, Ohio. It's starting to become, Ooh, excuse me, 50, 50 with Kentucky. Um, but even so like Cincinnati is kind of my home base. That's where I started doing real estate. Um, so I have a custom tag for Kentucky. Okay. And I have a custom tag also for Maryland. Um, and then I hit apply and those are all my clients that are in Maryland. Oh, perfect. Uh, one really perfect. weird thing that I noticed, um, yesterday because I got a buyer in Maryland and I, I was putting her into opportunities is that, um, they don't show up with the rest of my opportunities. It's really strange. So I have to go to all opportunities and that's where I can filter for, for okay. the people in Maryland. So just as an FYI, I don't think that they're not going anywhere. It's just with all the different market centers, it's just weird. So you'll just tag what area they're from when you start to filter? Yes. Okay. When, yeah. when I'm okay. tagging them in the beginning, I tag yeah. them buyer, um, Mets, past client referral, who I got them from, my DTD2 tag, and then I put the state if it's not Ohio. Okay. Yay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? I, I have a quick question. In eEdge, they had they offered that service where we could, you know, an email would go out once a month to your database and it would give them some type of information. I haven't been able to figure out in command how we can send out, um, whether it's a newsletter or whether I can copy and paste from like Keeping Matters Current or how I can get, do they have that in command yet? Not yet. Um, okay. I would say the only like recurring email that's on there right now that's really good is that monthly neighborhood nurture. Um, okay. I know they're working on that and you can do it manually, but that's one of the two things that I haven't really mastered in command. Uh, not okay. that I've mastered any of this, but. Do you know how to do it manually where I could copy and paste the materials from like keeping matters current? It's one of the two things that I haven't really touched okay, yet. So, perfect. Um, okay, perfect. But for the yeah. next class next month, and I'll send the dates um, in the email with the recording, I, I will be touching on that. Okay, perfect. You're holding me accountable. <laughs> okay, and then you're going to be sending anybody that signed up for this class will be, yes. you'll send everything. Okay, perfect. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. You more about uh, your Twilio account, how you have it set up, which plans you use. Um, I just have it on the prepaid plan. So I think it charged me $10 when I set it up and then every time or $20 and then every time it gets below $10, I get charged $20. I think I've spent in the last two years, 40 bucks. <laughs> um, and I send out a lot of text messages. So <laughs> um, it's a fraction of a penny per message. Um, and it just recharges automatically when it gets low. Well, are you charged a monthly fee? No. Yeah, they're charging me monthly. I don't know. Maybe you signed up for that. Yeah, I, I don't get charged monthly. Flora, I have two quick questions, I hope. Sure. Um, one is you were discussing Mets and haven't Mets, and you talked about if someone refers someone to you, they know your name and they know you're a realtor, so they're a Met. But when you were referring to the Facebook ad, you put them as a haven't Met when they do see your name and know that you're a realtor. How do you distinguish that? Um, because like, um, how do I, how do I explain this? I mean, they see my ad, but they're not really digesting that my name is here and then I sell real estate. They're just clicking on the ad for the listing. So they have no idea who I am. Like if I called them right now and I said, Hey, Terry, this is floor. He'll be like, who's, who's that? Not you. Whereas with a referral, like if I call them like I'm floor, I was referred to you by this person. They'll know exactly who I am. Right. And the second thing is you said, I thought, I thought that when we get a lead, we automatically put them into some type of an opportunity, but you said you don't create the opportunity until they're more committed or taking steps and you delete the current tag. Do you replace the current tag with something else? And why do you get rid of current 
um, when you create the opportunity? Um, so it's just about keeping them in one funnel, right? So they start off as a lead when we haven't really connected yet. I uncheck them as a lead that moves them to the next funnel, which is my current tag. Um, the current tag is when they're working on stuff and they're submitting documents to the lender or they're getting their house ready or, you know, whatever it is, they're getting repairs done on their house. Um, once they call me and they're like, Hey, we're ready. And I start scheduling photography and I start, you know, working on pricing and all that stuff. Then I'm going to take off that current tag because th these are the people that I'm following up with after my lead follow-up. So I do my calls to my database, then I do my lead follow-up, and then I'm following up with all my prospects, like the people that are actually, they're like committed to me and like we're going we're gonna to get them to either showing houses or active on the MLS. So I'm going to take them off as current and then I'm going to move them into opportunities because now they're like, they're getting closer and closer to becoming an actual transaction. Um, so it's just three different funnels that I move them to and from. It's actually, it's four funnels because if they don't answer ever, then I unmark them as a lead and I tag them as pond. And those are people that I've never even connected with over a long period of time. I'm sorry, what was that word? Pond. Pond. I can, I can put that graphic into the capping uh, resources ta uh, folder because um, I, I do have a slide for that. So I'll put that in into that um, into that folder. What my my lead tracking system is. Thank you. You're welcome. Laura. Yes. Um, I, I'm not sure I'm following the whole uh, B and E and the the whole DDT or DD2 system. I'm not sure. sure why why you have a B and E rather than like BC or something. Or how how does that work? How do you how do you use that? Um, this was created by somebody. I don't know if it's KW or if it. It, it was, was in bold, I think. It was KW. It was a it was a class that they um, rolled out maybe like three years ago. It was called DDT. Do the, do the database too. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Still yeah. a class called Never Ending Referrals. Yes. Okay. And See, and the I reason. Oh, go ahead. The reason the alphabet is divided up like that is to give uh, kind of equal weight to the number of people in the population, so that each week you're calling. Roughly, Roughly similar numbers of people. Correct. It was just like little. It was like little um, catchphrases that they came up for the letters. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. To make it so, fun. So there's 13 tags, um, and then they they have like a whole system where you know like it goes by week. So you can scroll down to you know week of April 20th, and you know that all your PLs. You send an email to your um, FNGs. And you send a note card to your um, B and E's. And that's by based off their last name. Based off their last name, correct. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Somebody has their hand. How up. do you, how do you combine or oh, do you not combine the, um, the database, the DTD two, and the smart plans? Uh, ask your question again. I'm trying to understand. So if they're in a smart plan, are you still going to call them when their week pops up? So it's just an extra touch that week or yeah, do you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, if they're a haven't met, I, I'm probably not going to send them a note card <laughs> that week, okay. but you know, it just depends. It just depends. And you're going to be opening up their contact card and seeing like what the touches have been. Have they even mm -hmm. responded? Should I mark this as a pond? You know, whatever it is. So gotcha. it's just whatever, however you run your business. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Or can you come to Philly? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully this was helpful. I, I changed the presentation style. So hopefully I got everything in there that I meant to get in there. Um, any ahas? Well, this was just amazing, just so you know. It kind of oh, just okay. linked my whole brain together. Thank you. I, oh my I have a question so, really quick. Oh, sure. Um, you, you mentioned getting notifications when you get new leads. Yeah. I never get a notification. How do I set that up? Um, do you have your Kelly app downloaded? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, right now, the Kelly application, or sorry, the Kelly notifications are not coming through. And I think that right. that's something that they're actively working on. But you should get a little bell um, notification up here. If you don't get that, then we talked about setting up a smart view. 
um, where okay. you're um, putting up the most recently added people. So when they were created um, up at Perfect. the top. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Um, or is, is there a way to get on a like a contact list with you so that when you do new classes that we get contacted? Uh, yes, I, that's a really good idea. I will, um, I'll grab all of your guys' information and I'll, uh, I'll make a campaign on BombBomb. Bomb. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, so this is my Instagram page. If you guys can follow me, it's Day Maria Holmes. And then my, I, it's the same thing for Facebook. If you guys want to follow me and see kind of some of the things that I do, um, like I do um, housewarming parties for all of my buyers and I post those videos. Um, so you can just rip off and duplicate or give me feedback. I've made a lot of friends through this class. So I'd appreciate it if you guys follow me and that way I can see your stuff too. Uh, Flora, I'm trying to find you on Instagram. What was your um, handle again? Day Maria Holmes. Is that it? Why can't I find mm -hmm. you? Oh, Do you know when they're going to start adding like monthly newsletter campaigns and buyer campaigns and seller campaigns like we used to have in, in eEdge? I know that's something that they're actively working on, um, that just putting them into smart plans. Um, our regional director told, or our regional technology director told us that sh um, we'll be able to share our smart plans very soon. Um, so I guess with that rollout, they'll probably have more smart plans from KWRI with, you know, buyer information and seller information that you can put people on. Like even the monthly newsletter, you know, I had that on almost all my clients and I got a lot of positive feedback and now I don't I know. know what to do with that. Uh, I know. So you could do something through designs, but it's just going to be manual and I'll, I'll learn that. Um, content for you guys for, for next class um, so that I'll be able to present it and teach it. Um, but right now, I don't even know how to do the manual emails through MailChimp, but I know a lot of agents that are doing that and they're just doing it manually every month. It sucks, but I'm sure that they're working on that. Um, I hate to ask you to do this again and you don't have to do it now, but maybe you can send me something of how to add the, um, the tags for the D1, D2? DTD2. Um, D2. So, um, how to do it in bulk. Yep. So you want to go into um, this little section here on the column. You see how it's hyperlinked? You click on the name. You click sort by last name, A to Z. Okay. And then you just verify that all of these people actually do have A last names all the way to the bottom because sometimes you'll get Bs in here. Um, so you just want to make sure that you're not selecting the wrong people. So all these people have A last names. So I select them all. Select bulk action. Add bulk tags. And then you just type in A and W or whatever one you're working on. And it's going to come up with create custom tag. And then you're just going to click add. And then you're going to search for that tag and add it. So it doesn't automatically add it when you create it. So you actually have to go back and search for it and then hit submit. All right, guys, thank you so, 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 so much. If you see um, me post our, the next class, um, just give your feedback on there so I can get a bigger crowd. And I really appreciate you guys, you know, spending two hours with me. And I really hope that this got you one step closer to falling in love with command. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome class. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much, it was great.